In the previous lecture, I told you that the next time I would show you how to use vPython and the graphing feature in Excel. So all that I did here, I, I did change one thing, which is that I added a velocity to the entire process. And you can see that down here I have added the velocity in the extraction as one of the things that we're going to write. And just to clarify the way that this works, this is still inside the while loop, which means, you see, it's still inside the while loop, which means that every time we pass through the while loop one time, it writes a new row that has those um, values in it. So I'll just hit the Run button, and then I'll pull up the spreadsheet. And everything's working as we had expected. Now that pops up here. Now this is my folder. I'm not quite sure what's going on with all this stuff over here. But, oh, that's the preview. I gotcha. So we've got this uh, simple C, which is what I called this. And now we get our Excel file. And there's a, probably a better thing that I could have outputted here, which is the distance between the two bodies. Um, that's something that I could have calculated, <clears throat> and actually we had to calculate in vPython. But I'm going to do it now, just so that you can see how it works. So I'll just do distance in meters. And what's involved here is we know that the initial distance was 0.25. And so we'll just add to that the previous distance. And then what we might want to do, once we have that worked out, I'll just click and drag that down, is we might actually want to do inverse distance squared. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, in the previous videos, we had seen that the relationship between distance and the force is supposed to be related to the inverse of the distance squared. And that's exactly the, the equation that we used in our simulation. So, oops, I should do one over this squared. And if I click, so I clicked and dragged that down, and I now have a nice list of inverse distances squared. And these are my forces. And you can see that the inverse distance squared goes down, and the force also goes down. So now if I plot these using a nice little scatter plot, we have so many points that it actually ends up looking kind of like a, a linear plot, or a, a line plot, rather, I should say. And if I go and add a trend line to this, the expectation is that a linear equation set with a y-intercept of 0 should actually work really, really well. Why is it off at all? Well, the reason why it would be off at all is because we didn't solve for an exact solution. We solved for a, a, an iterative solution. So we, we did a computational solution rather than a direct solution, which we could get from doing algebra and calculus. Okay, so this is an alternative to using calculus, is to use computer instead. And very, very rapidly, problems get way too complicated to do through algebra and calculus, and so you rely on the computer, the iterative model, to get you approximate solutions. So there we go, we get this solution out. This would be, I believe, the force, and this would be the inverse distance squared. So this value here, and you can check this on your own, this should be k times q1 times q2 for our example problem. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you are just a couple of other things that you can do with uh, Python with electrical charges, and I'm going to put those in some other videos.